Hi, I'm James Harbeck. For today's pronunciation tip, I'd like to talk about umlaut. Now, if you're like most people, to you, umlaut means those two dots that you see over certain vowel letters. But if you call those an umlaut, somebody's going to show up behind you out of nowhere and say, No, you fool! That is a diheresis! Umlaut is the phonological process that it represents! Oh! Now, to be fair, they're not wrong that diaresis is a name for those two dots. And they're not wrong that umlaut is the phonological process it represents in German vowels. But the idea that you can't call a diacritical mark after the phonological process it represents displays a certain naivete. In fact, I've got bad news for people who believe that, about the accent on the E in naivete. Now, to be fair, not all diaresses represent umlaut. For instance, the one in naivete is like the one so beloved of the people at the New Yorker who put them on one of the E's in re-enter, one of the O's in coordinate. It just says, hey, don't pronounce these two vowels together. They're separate. They're leading separate vowel lives. And on the other hand, if you like heavy metal music, like Motorhead, they tend to use umlauts just for decorative purposes. They don't stand for anything other than how Teutonic they are. But when an umlaut stands for umlaut, or you know, even depending on how loose you want to get, when it doesn't, you can call it an umlaut. Yes, you can. If you don't believe me, just get any decent dictionary. And I say decent because there's crappy dictionaries you can buy in crappy places, but don't. Just don't buy crappy dictionaries. Um, here's Webster's Ninth New Collegiate Dictionary, just for example. Uh, the definition of umlaut. The first definition is, of course, the phonological process, which I'm about to tell you about. The second one is a diacritical mark placed especially over a German vowel to indicate umlaut. So, umlaut stand for umlaut. Yeah. So what is umlaut, the phonological process? Well, let me... Uh, let me digress very briefly into articulatory and acoustic phonetics to talk about back and front vowels. Now, vowels, also consonants, but we're talking about vowels today, are determined by the point of constriction in your mouth created by the tongue. Your tongue in your mouth is sort of like the piston in, say, a slide whistle. I don't have a slide whistle, so I just grabbed this tin whistle, put tape over the holes, and used a wooden spoon. You can do the same thing if you're whistling. <clears throat> If you're speaking, and this is where the thing comes, you can hear a back vowel like ooh, oh, ah, sounds lower than a front vowel like yeah. so oh, see. if you're talking with your voice, the the frequency produced by your larynx is going to override the acoustic frequency resonances in your mouth, in your vocal cavity, so you'll, you will hear the same pitch if you go O, oh, C, but if you listen carefully, you will hear the overtones, the higher resonances, what linguists like to call formants. Um, and those are what tell your brain what vowel, and also consonant, you're hearing. It has to do with how far front and back the tongue is in the mouth. Also, how high and low. High and low is the difference between ooh and ah. Okay, that's enough phonetics. The point is, umlaut is when a back vowel, like ooh or ah, has been moved to the front. But ooh does not become e. You would think, okay, ooh, back vowel, e, front vowel. But in German, unlike in English, they haven't lost the rounded front vowels. What am I talking about? Okay, e is not rounded. U 
is rounded. So u moves moves forward and becomes u u like that. Now, if you're taking a course in how to speak German, they'll tell you probably not to. They won't. They won't say, "Oh, start with an u and move your tongue forward," because most people will be like, "I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do," and then they'll injure their tongue and everything will be bad. So they just say, say an e and then round your lips. E u. And that's it. That is long U umlaut. That's it. And for short U umlaut, it's E. E, U. For O umlaut, E, U. Short, E, U. And for A umlaut, because it's not rounded, it just becomes A and E. So you get it in names like Albrecht Dürer and Günther Grass and Johann Wolfgang von Goethe and Goetz von Berlichingen and Käthe Kolwitz and Elisabeth Langesser. And also because EU stands for OI in German, if you have an E umlaut U, you get OI as in, for instance, Fräulein. That's the whole deal. That's umlaut. That's what those two dots on a vowel in German stand for. The vowel has shifted forward. Now, you might have noticed that in Goethe, we usually spell it G-O-E-T-H-E rather than G-O dot T-H-E. And that is because umlaut can also be represented by an E after the letter. For instance, Albrecht Dürer, you could write it with D-U-E-R-E-R. -E -E In that case, the E is not called an umlaut. Come on, it's an E. But the vowel process is still umlaut. Um, now, if you're speaking English and you want to say one of these words, you're probably not going to say, well, I was at the gallery and I was looking at paintings by Albrecht Dürer. Then I went to the bookstore and I went to uh, buy a book by Günther Grass, but uh, I ended up with one by Johann Wolfgang von Goethe. I mean, you might if you're that kind of dude. But you might also say, well, Albrecht Dürer, you know, Günther Grass, uh, Goethe. Incidentally, in England, they like to say, well, Goethe is, spelled, is pronounced G-E-R-T-A, Goethe, you understand. Don't do that if you're Canadian or American, because then you're saying Goethe, which is a whole other name. Um, you can get close enough. Goethe and Goetz von Berlichingen. It's, 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 there's a lot of leeway. Most people are going to be very forgiving. And for the people who aren't very forgiving, just remember not to talk to them next time. I don't know. Anyway, that is it. That is everything today on umlaut, the two dots over German vowels. And by the way, remember, if it's not German, the two dots might not stand for that. So you might want to look it up. Uh, all for now. Toodaloo. Goodbye. Or as they say in German, tschüss.